Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan Karbis-Rushan to discuss our documentary, Fox in the Hen House, and some feedback we got, and the next documentary we might do. So, what's the feedback we got? Overall, I think people seem to like it. They were impressed. Um, I think you saw that behavior that people sometimes have when they comment without reading an article. Mm. So you definitely saw, I managed, you know, initially going in, I was like, oh, I really hope that people both on, let's say, the pro-capitalism and pro-socialism side are going to both kind of be like, wow, this was kind of fair. Like, he highlighted both sides. We get it. Um, and I think some felt that way, but it was impressive that I managed to offend both big fans of capitalism and big fans of socialism, which I think is more uh, a sign that uh, a lot of people were commenting, jumping to conclusions um, without having seen it. And the, the interesting thing is when we kind of doubled down and released the trailer, people were like, oh my God, this trailer makes it seem like so-and-so. And I was like, yes, it's a trailer. It's like a cliffhanger. It's, it's meant purposely not to um, you know, give away. Give away. Yeah, but, but, it was, but, but overall, I think it did change, which was the goal. It changed the kind of conversation about, oh, Watch Mondo does this type of thing too. And again, like we put it on context because we recognize that um, this is very different, right? I mean, I think ultimately it's a story about like entrepreneurship and the role that that plays. And I think between now and 2020, this is just going to intensify this conversation about why are so many young people drawn to socialism? Um, and then I think a lot of it is also semantics. I think when people talk about socialism, sometimes they'll think of Venezuela, which isn't really socialist. That's backwards, you know, kleptocracy. And, um, you know, is, is Norway socialist? Not really, because it has market, you know, economics. So it's, I think, overall, I was very happy with the work the team did. I, and clearly, I kind of had a concept in mind, and a lot of people worked on it. So I was pretty happy with it. And... Admittedly, I think the second documentary might have made more sense as our first one, but mm. given timing and opportunity and access, I just dove into it. And, you know, as our colleague Derek says, like, Ash is a force of nature. Like, once I wanted to do it, I was just like, we're going to do it. So. so, wait, you didn't say what the topic is yet. For the second one? Yeah. No, so the second one is, I'll, I'll put it on the layers. Again, it, like, there's a through line, which is what do we have unique perspective, expertise, and like kind of authority and leadership and, and expertise in. So I want to talk about how YouTube did not just simply democratize production and distribution and disrupt media, but inadvertently, it actually took a community creators who historically were beholden to big media companies and it ushered this era of entrepreneurship. If you think of Michelle Phan, if you think of PewDiePie, if you think of Jeffree Star, I mean, these are empires, right? And they're empires, creators, storytellers, who would have probably worked for a, an organization, but because of YouTube, it's ushered this wave of entrepreneurship. And through my perspective, you know, Watch Mojo is more of a company, it's not a, you know, individual creator, but I kind of want to highlight the irony that for six years I was chasing traditional investors, i.e. venture capitalists, to try to raise financing. And I myself, it was by really doubling down on YouTube that was able to scale the business so that it could be uh, independently uh, profitable and whatnot. So I think there's a, there's a story there of how YouTube hasn't just kind of like disrupted media, but it's also, you know, disrupted, you know, fundraising and, you know, how an entrepreneur could build a business. So what's the title? Uh, you know I like subtitles. I, I like I'm thinking something like the paradox of entrepreneurship, how YouTube ushered an era of entrepreneur. Uh, like how, how oh, it's a bit. Uh, I'm not sure I would use this word. How YouTube emancipated the creative class. Mm. You know, because emancipation is better on the on the first part. Yeah, no, I agree. The paradox. <laughs> I like paradox more and more. Um, I'm working on a presentation on like the paradox of life that has like. Paradox of this, paradox of that. And, but, but yeah, I, I like the how YouTube emancipated the creator class. But emancipation is a strong word because it connotes slavery. So maybe I'll offend everybody then, you know, that way. Whoever that wasn't offended yet by Fox <laughs> in the Hen House, get in line. Special coming up. Were there any uh, standout comments on Fox in the Hen House from anybody that, we, that you sent it to that we would have heard of or was involved or... There was a lot of, oh, this is great. It's like, obviously, there were some like thought provoking, good, but there was also, look, the people that bash something without reading it, I mean, that's just like useless. If you watch it and you criticize it, that I find interesting. Um, the main takeaway was that, that people just jump 
very quickly on semantics. When you have different people debating something and not even agreeing on definitions, what's the point? But two, it proved my point that people, some are so militantly at either extreme, blindly capitalism is perfect, blindly socialism is the way to go, that they don't realize that these systems are ideologies in theory. The only way these work and succeed in practice is a little bit of a nuanced, balanced approach. And don't forget to check out Fox in the Hen House, which is our documentary, which is live on Context TV. Am I right? Yes. So check that out. See you next time.